with summer just around the corner, or maybe not depending on when you're watching this or what hemisphere you're in, it's time to get outside, soak in some rays, and do some gardening. Our pharmacokinetic-loving school kids are helping out in the community garden, hastily eliminating weeds. What are we covering in today's sketch? Well, with all this weed clearance, it's a great opportunity to discuss drug clearance. Let's go. Elimination. The final step in a drug's journey through the body is the irreversible removal of drugs from the body, just like these kids permanently eliminating these weeds from the garden. There are multiple ways that drugs can be eliminated from the body, and it's usually a combination of various elimination routes. If the organ has contact with the outside environment, it usually partakes in drug elimination. Let's check out this garden a bit more closely. These garden beds look a lot like organs involved in drug elimination. Renal elimination, wherein drugs are filtered through the glomerulus in the kidneys and excreted in urine, is the primary route of clearance for most drugs. This is why the glomerular filtration rate, or GFR, is used when making decisions with regard to drug choice and dosing adjustments in renal impairment. Other key routes of elimination include via the gut in feces, through the lungs via exhalation of expired air, by the liver via bile, and through skin via sweat. Remember, total clearance is the summation of clearance from all routes of elimination, so renal clearance plus hepatic clearance plus clearance via the lungs and so on. We're clearing weeds from all these garden beds today, symbolizing the effort of multiple organs and systems in drug clearance. Let's take a closer look at renal clearance. We can alter the elimination characteristics of some drugs by altering the pH of urine. Weakly acidic drugs and their metabolites will be cleared more rapidly by increasing the pH of the urine, alkalinization. Recall that at Sketchy, we symbolize acids by the color yellow and bases by the color blue. So, these acidic yellow weeds being effectively cleared by our basic blue t-shirt wearing kid should help you remember this. So the opposite must be true. The clearance of weakly basic drugs and their metabolites is favored by decreasing the pH of the urine. Acidification. See those basic blue weeds being yanked out by our acidic yellow friend here? This is because charged molecules are more polar and soluble in water and therefore more readily excreted in urine. We can measure the volume of plasma from which a substance, like a drug, is completely removed over a certain period or unit of time. We call this drug clearance, or just clearance. You'll see this abbreviated to CL, and is usually measured in liters per hour or milliliters per minute. Note that clearance does not tell us how much drug is cleared from the plasma. Rather, the amount of plasma that is cleared of drug over a certain period of time. Who is leading the race to clear the most weeds? Surprisingly, it's me, despite having a strong aversion to the sunlight and any sort of manual labor. Now he has the right idea. A weed-killing pump pack, killing weeds by the hour. What a rate! To work out the clearance of a drug, we need to know the elimination rate, which is the amount of drug eliminated from the body over a given period of time. The elimination rate is true for drugs that exhibit first-order kinetics. Recall that first-order kinetics is where the rate of elimination increases as plasma drug concentration increases. Elimination rate is represented as the amount or mass of drug eliminated per unit time, for example, milligrams per hour. What's that balancing steadily on the seesaw? A big bottle of concentrate. Once we know the elimination rate and the measured plasma concentration, represented as mass per volume, we can work out the clearance at steady state. When working out the clearance, make sure the units you are using are all the same and convert them where required. The clearance will come out as volume per time, for example, liters per hour. We can also rearrange the equation to work out elimination rate if we know plasma concentration and clearance. This would mean that elimination rate equals clearance multiplied by plasma concentration. Again, ensure your units match. We can also work out the clearance of a drug using the area under the curve, or AUC, where the graph is plasma concentration over time. Our mound of cleared weeds looks a lot like a plasma concentration curve, right? 
Let this hastily disposed clearance sale magazine on our curved weed mound symbolize that clearance can be worked out using area under the curve. Hold, hold up, area under the curve, was that what? The area under the curve tells us the extent of exposure to a drug, or the amount that has reached the circulation. It's exactly what it describes, the area underneath the plasma concentration curve, where the x-axis is time and the y-axis is plasma concentration. Our curved mound of weeds is exposed to that sunlight beaming down, so let that remind you that the area under the curve represents the extent of drug exposure. Oh, Frank, no! Always a troublemaker. <laughs> Let Frank do in the dose as he launches himself into our mound of cleared weeds show you that we can calculate clearance by multiplying the dose administered by the bioavailability, or F for Frank, and divide that by the AUC, which is given in mass by time over volume, for example, milligrams by hours per liter. We use this formula following extravascular administration because, as you may recall from our drug absorption sketches, extravascular administration almost always has a bioavailability of less than one due to factors like efflux pumps and hepatic first pass metabolism. What about intravascular or IV administration? Well, let this IV growing over the F in our sign here symbolize that F, or bioavailability, is not considered when working out clearance in intravascular administration, as bioavailability is one following IV administration. We can remove F from the equation when calculating clearance for IV administered drugs and use dose divided by AUC. That lone uppercase D should help you remember that. Look, I'm getting burnt, and I'm not even there. Let's wrap up. Recall that elimination is the irreversible removal of drugs from the body, and that there are multiple ways that drugs can be eliminated. The kidneys are considered the main route of elimination, but other organs and systems like the gut, lungs, liver, and skin are also involved in drug and drug metabolite elimination. Remember that due to increased polarity and therefore water solubility, weakly acidic drugs are eliminated faster in higher pH urine, whereas weakly basic drugs are eliminated faster in lower pH urine. We can measure the volume of plasma that is completely cleared of drug over a certain period or unit of time, its clearance, as well as the amount of drug eliminated from the body over a given period of time, the elimination rate. We can calculate clearance using plasma concentration and elimination rate. Clearance can also be worked out using area under the curve, or AUC, which is the extent of exposure to a drug or the amount of drug that has reached the circulation. Working out clearance using AUC depends on the route of administration. Consider bioavailability, or F, when determining clearance for extravascular route, yet this can be excluded or considered as one when calculating for intravascular administration. Make sure you check out our other sketches in our pharmacokinetics course. I promise, next time there will be less dirt, less sun, and more of me.